A hearty good afternoon from Texas. How did we get to Texas already? What happened in New Mexico? Well, there's not much going on in New Mexico on I-40, so <laughs> we just kind of skedaddled right through that. If you've never been on I-40 before, it gets windy out here, so we have wind advisories going on every single day. We've been taking it really slow, but boy, it still pushes you around like crazy. Oh boy. Door is like so hard to shut in all this wind. Wow. We technically just experienced three different time zones in the past two days, two or three days. Arizona doesn't honor the time zone change. So they uh. are currently on a, a Pacific time zone. And then we went to New Mexico, mountain time, and now we're in central. Check out this fridge, fully stocked thanks to Costco. The temperature drops pretty quickly on these RV fridges and then they're just like, struggling and trying so hard to cool back down. Gotta trust the process though. It will come in good time. Well, cheers to being back out on the road. I don't understand how you and I always end up rushing across all these states. Cause we're always like, this year's gonna be different. We're gonna take things slow. And then something pops up and we're like, okay, we need to go. So we need to go right now. A little bit after you go slow or fast, you still gotta get somewhere. Yeah. So like if you go slow, now you're dealing with more travel days. How many times do you want to have to pull over and like pack up each time? Yeah. It's a fine balance. We are fully stocked <laughs> for the Eclipse as well. Look at all this. S'mores. Thanks Costco. Dots pretzels. Thanks Costco. More Dots pretzels. More back there. Right back here. Mm -hmm. There's just bags and bags. We're going to be good. I do need to update this Harvest Host because I told them we would be here between one and three. I don't know why I said one and three. Like I should have known it was gonna be later. So we'll be there in about, I'll tell them an hour. They, they really want to know if we're gonna be past 5.30. Wow. <laughs> you don't look very comfortable, sir. Give mom kisses. Look at those little chicken tenders. Look at the, look at his pinky toe. Ugh, <laughs> toe beans, baby, toe beans. Woo! Texas, you're blowing me around. Okay, we are off. It is a winery and you know what? This is our first Harvest Host Winery location. We haven't done one yet, so we're gonna take you along with us. Here we go. Looks like plenty of uh, parking out yonder. Yeah. You hear that? What? Exactly. No highway noise. <laughs> oh, okay. You're so funny. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. And then if you need water or anything, it's right there. Wow. Okay. Oh, water. We just pumped over until six. Yeah. Okay. If you want to bring dinner or anything, you're Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. More campers. You know, with it being on a that whole decline, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have to unhitch. Do you want to fill up any water? No, we're good. We have a third. Okay. <laughs> She looks so pretty without her fender, doesn't she? So pretty. We could always roll the uh, roll it up on one side and then just stay connected. That's good. Let me chalk it. All right. Keep forgetting to update you guys on how the boondocking situation's going since we got the two batteries and the inverter. So we do have two lithium batteries of Lion Energy and we got a 2000 watt inverter. Easily enough juice to get us through the night. Run the microwave, the Keurig, TV. Those are like the three hot topics that we need every single night. Well, we don't need it, but it's nice to have. There is like a system that I need to uh, better implement for myself, more like a checklist, so to speak. So when coming down here, I plug into the side of the inverter and I only run a dog bone off of that and then plug it into the 50 amp connection. That's the best I come up with so far. The other thing that's really important is unplugging the battery charger. We learned the hard way that one time when we first did this was we were sucking so much juice and throwing everything into a loop cycle. The batteries were off charging whatever they were wanting to use for the AC power. 
the AC power was going back into the battery charger and the battery charger was trying to take its own power and re-engage it into the batteries. Simple as that. Now we are unplugged with the battery charger. I just let that hang there. Couple batteries here and then here's where I plug in that dog bone adapter that I was talking about. So it's not beautiful, but she does, she does this well. Okay, so this is what we got, a 15 amp, and then we got a 15 amp dog bone to a 50. It's not super ideal, but it, like I said, it gets the job done for a quick overnight. Ideally, one day we'll have one of those transfer switches to where we don't have to do any of this, but that's just more money and more time, and I just don't want to put more money into this. What we're going to do is uh, make do with what we got and do it the Hanks way and probably just put it off for years on end until one day we're like, surprise, we got a transfer switch. The other bummer thing I forgot to tell you about is since I'm running the 50 amp cord literally into this front compartment is this front door cannot latch, obviously. This thing is thick, so it just kind of stays shut. And yeah, unfortunately stuff is exposed here, but we'll only put this out when uh, we're not really worried about theft or anything. There we go. Boom. Sir, turn off that. I gotta turn off that fridge. I need a refill. Because, like, if not, the fridge fan will just run. While there's propane running. While there's propane running. We don't like that. No. We just don't. Look at that fan. It, <laughs> we need a new one. Do you want me to have one sent to Wichita? Look at that. How old is this thing? A couple years. You, I think you replaced it in like 2022. I forgot to tell you that actually one side died. So okay. only half of it's working now. I'm surprised well, half of it's working. Me too. Power coming on. Yep. There she there is. It is. I heard it. All right. I think we could produce our own power if we get our own wind turbines out here. Well, we could be ripping off. We would, we yeah, would let her rip 80 amp, 100 80 amp. 100 amp. So you don't want that door to be shut because well, it'll, it'll make like, noise. Look, see, I can't really shut it because of the, the cord. So, oh well. But that's okay like that, right? Yeah. Whew. Hey, come eat and answer the door. Do you like Harvest Hosh? Oh, wow. I can't believe we lost an hour. It's almost 5 o'clock already. It's confused. You want to do a little laundry? We'll see how well those batteries last. Yeah, no, and I'm the, the water. <laughs> from the Hanks household in Texas grabbing a cup of coffee it's 8 20 in the morning I sound a little rough because I literally just rolled out of bed sleeping beauty and Prince Charming however are nice and cozy still in bed sleeping but we gotta hit the road we got a lot of miles to put on today we're taking on Texas and there is a lot of it to cover these harvest hopes I have to say are really nice it's great to get off grid get away from all the traffic noise and the hustle and bustle and just get a good night's sleep and plus looking outside at these great views of the sun sunrise and other campers out here doing the same thing we're doing yeah it's really nice to be in good company oh I feel like there's so much to do today <clears throat> however I won't complain too much because we're on our way to go see that solar eclipse and that is something that is going to be worthwhile. We got this. Right? Yeah. Today will be good. Oh, we see movement. You guys were both under there the whole time? Mm -hmm. Listen, Hank's family, we need to be in this together as a team today. We need to move, hustle, and make our way across Texas. And we can't do it while sleeping in bed for the rest of our lives. Hook up the trailer. We'll stay here. <laughs> Just pull us like this. You guys would love that. <laughs> bouncing down the road. We have been keeping all the lights on and I am curious to see how much of the battery we blew through. Oh, 37% on one, 
and on the other 43 percent man I, I think two batteries might be all we need right now because when we get here we just like to run the fan a little bit just have a cross breeze to get some fresh air in here cool it down we like to run the microwave if we need to just like microwave some rice or veggies the keurig in the mornings and then the tv at night babe we got all the other campers are packing up and going i always feel late to the game everyone's so responsible and on the road early and i always feel left behind i'm like wait don't leave well they're gone so now it's our time to go we can't be last to the on the road hurry hurry i'll tell you what the real struggle is these dishes that sit here because we don't have enough water for boondocking and we can't wash our dishes. And now we have to wait until we get to the campground tonight in order to get these addressed because somebody had to make pancakes at 8.30 at night. Let's get going here soon. I'll go stinky. I cannot get enough of this place. Texas in general, these gas prices are amazing. And How this, much? The, sorry to cut you off, but, oh wait, I can't see. Your, your camera work. Don't hit the curb. See, whenever he vlogs like this and I have to turn or, or vice versa, we're always like, I can't see. I can't <laughs> see the mayor. I don't even know what city we're in. I just know <laughs> we're in Texas. So that's that's a <laughs> wonderful thing. How much are we paying at the pump today? Mm, like 3.29. So we say like 20 cents a gallon. Not bad. You wanna go fuel up? Sweet. So I'll just sit here and be not a passenger princess, but a driver princess. I'll keep this door open because when I fuel up, I like to watch the gauge go. You would. Because mm -hmm. these truck pumps pump so fast that if you don't keep an eye on it, it's gonna come pouring out all over yeah. the truck. Ask me how and I know. And we're not even that empty. Like we're actually pretty full. I'm so glad you guys are here on this journey because we love not just showing you RV life, but certain events that might make you want to experience in the future or stay away from. Like the eclipse in 2044, there's gonna be another total solar eclipse. Because you're watching this, you'll know, should I take my RV to the eclipse or should I go by the Hank's advice and just stay far away? I'm assuming this is common when you live in the Great Plains. Anytime there's a chance of a thunderstorm that you're also gonna get handed a tornado watch. I'm just sitting here chilling while he's driving. I was actually about to take a nap and then my phone just sends an alert that says tornado watch for Wichita Falls, Texas. And I don't want this to be another tsunami Alaska scenario where we just panic. It's not comforting. You know, uh, people will ask us all the time, how do you deal with weather or weather extremes in certain areas? I will say that tornadoes are the ones that scare me the most because they can, they're so sudden, they can happen out of nowhere. Hurricanes, you kind of have a bit of a preparation for those. You can get out of the area because you know it's coming. We're, luckily, we're going to an RV park in Wichita Falls, so I'm gonna be asking them when we get there, where's where's your shelter? Just I'm just asking for I'm just asking for fun. Like, where's your tornado shelter? <laughs> the plot just thickens all the time. You know, I'm like, there's not many people around, and that makes me nervous. Is it just desolate here, or is everyone evacuating the area? <laughs> Are there campers here at least? Okay, strength in numbers. All right. There's no way a tornado's lifting up this fifth wheel and rig with $500 of Costco supplies in here. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of campers in here. Okay, I'm gonna ask them all. Do you guys get a lot of tornado watches? Look at, dude, they got ice cream cones, flamingos. They're bringing oh. good vibes here. Oh, that's They're nice. like, we may have tornadoes ripping throughout here, but we got some positive vibes going on. Come on in. All right. Let's go check this place out. I guess we should shut the truck off, right? And just lock it up. Hello. Hey. Hey. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Good. We were just uh, checking in. South Dakota. Are you guys considered <laughs> snowbirds? I think that would suck. <laughs> we pretend we know what happens. Oh my gosh. Keep an eye on the weather. Wow. It's supposed to get nasty today. It, is it? Yeah. Have you seen the weather today? Yes, and it's probably going to be later this evening. Later this evening, oh, okay. okay. Gotcha. And it's, uh... It's going to be bad. 
Large hails. Oh my god. How gosh. often does a tornado drop down in this area? Not, not since okay. 1979. Okay, I read about that. <coughs> where do you guys go if there's like a. Yeah, where should we where go? Should... If it gets real bad, mm -hmm. our our maintenance guy lives here on site. He'll come unlock this door. Okay. And you can come in here. Okay. It's, it's wow. the only safe place in this park. Okay. Oh, and it's okay. not really that safe. Well, it's yeah. better than the RV. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Much than better than the RV. That's true. Okay, good to know. You keep the maintenance man's numbers right here. Okay. In case you need anything, if it gets really bad and you get nervous, call him and he can come over right. and unlock Stop it for you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting y'all. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Not the reassurance I was looking for. No. They're like, oh, it's going to get bad. I'm I know. Like, mm -hmm. They were like, it's gonna be bad later. I don't know. Well, now I'm thinking of the hail and we don't have vent covers. This place is nice though. These poulter sites are about 700 feet long. So the plan is to keep your crate out tonight, Dexter, just in case. Everything's big in Texas, even the poulter sites. Will you have enough room behind you to put the truck in? <laughs> I might be able to squeeze it in there. 700 foot pull through site and it's level. It's like first time in a long time we don't have to do the Andersons. If you're confused to why we have been using the Anderson levelers a lot lately, our auto level on the rig has not been acting right for a long time. We just run into some issues. It beeps and hollers and throws a fit. So hopefully we'll get that addressed when we go get RV repairs later this year. Stay tuned for that. Okay, just about five minutes till four o'clock. Nays downstairs getting cleaned up. Um, they're calling for bad thunderstorms, possibly some hail, and we're under a tornado watch right now. So I'm not super thrilled about it. I'm not so worried about the tornado itself. I know that sounds crazy, but more so the hail is what I'm really, really nervous about. Yeah, I hope the truck's going to be okay. I'll keep you posted though. Yeah, actually, I think it's probably a good idea that we just pack a go bag, like essential items. Okay. I, I agree. Actually, I wanted to do that, but I didn't want you to say I was overreacting. Yeah, a tornado, as soon as, if we hear sirens or, because our phones will go off and do like the, the thing uh, that, yeah. well, you'll hear that and then the phones will make that like emergency broadcast sound. Yeah, I'm glad that orange one. Okay. Get your to-go bag ready, sir, just in case. He's like, I'm good here, sleeping in bed. The essentials. Toothbrushes. And while you're doing that, I'll make us some dinner so we have full bellies before the storm arrives. Just never a dull day in the Hanks household, I tell you what. I mean, everyone else here, people are still pulling into the RV park. The RV lady, you know, the one that checked us in, wasn't giving reassuring vibes, but everyone else is like, yeah, I don't know, it should be okay. Is it better to have false hope or just shoot it real? I don't know. Oh. Alright, I'm making chicken. I did forget to mention, however, that Nene came up with the great idea to fill up the water tanks with some extra water in case it does get windy. That way it just gives us every chance to keep our feet on the ground with a... Well, not with a tornado, but just with the high winds and the RV blowing over. So Thank way you. to think on your toes on that one. Aww. So we got like two thirds of our fresh water tank. Black tank's a little, little full. And we you should be go good. Fill up some more? We should be good. Now in a scenario like this, if you are RVing and you have strong winds coming and your awnings are still out, then you have a lot to learn about RVing. That's a, that's a rookie move right there. So I packed you a spare change of clothes, underwear, socks, and then like some toiletries. Okay. All right. And so it begins. <sighs> I do have to tell you guys, we are watching something on TV and this guy's name is Ryan Hall. Y'all, it's the name of his YouTube channel, and it's great resource because us RVers out on the road do not have access to cable at all times, so we don't have the weather channel. Yes, I know we have our phones to look at weather, but if you ever want up to date, he's on a live stream and constantly updating the weather. It's kind of reassuring to keep our eye on that live weather tracking system. Go check it out. It's just another another little tool to have in your back pocket for when you're in scenarios like this. See point where we're at. Where are we? The little blue, the blue uh, 
point there. Now this is a future radar, I think. While we're waiting, we threw on a load of laundry and I opened up the pantry and it's extremely, extremely hot in here. I'm like, why is it so hot in here? You'll never guess what we found. Oh my gosh, it's hot and steamy. I can feel, oh, everything's moist. Uh-oh. Wow, everything's really moist in here. We gotta get that dehumidifier over here. Stat. Stat. Wow, that fell down. No way. Like the whole vent came undone. Oh, no way, really? Yeah. Oh, shh. Uh, it's completely oh my what uh, happened did it just not get just tight enough yeah just traveling and bouncing down the highway good catch well it's hard to miss when it's so stinking hot in there look at all the lint all over the shelves well i guess we could kind of clean it out while we're back here can you grab me the vacuum <laughs> It's empty. There's no like limb. Right. Cause it's all in the shelf. Flathead. Thank you. Right? Yeah, I would tighten it pretty good. I could take a look at it too when you're done. I mean, we just gotta check it every so often. You were like, it's so warm. And I'm like, this is cause we're doing laundry. Calm down. <laughs> wow. Now okay. all we have to worry about is a storm. Great. Well, we're about two hours into it, and all we've seen is a little bit of light rain, so I cannot express how thankful we are that we're just safe and able to cook a dinner and just take a breath. The Hanks family is safe. We'll get back on the road very soon. Make sure you go check out some more of our other content that you might have missed. There's a lot to catch up on. We love you guys, and we will see you next Thursday.